The FDA signed off, and now today, a CDC advisory panel has given a green light to new COVID-19 booster shots. So for who? Who should be getting these? And what do you need to know about the vaccine at this point in the pandemic? Dr. Tess Barton, an infectious disease specialist with UT Health San Antonio, joining us today in our Q&A to talk about all of those things and more. Uh, Dr. Barton, thanks for being here, first of all. Let's talk about who. Who should be getting these boosters right now? Thanks for having me, first of all. So um, yeah, so the recommendation for the new, what's called the bivalent booster, because it has sort of the old version of, 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 of coronavirus plus the Omicron, the latest Omicron variant, um, is recommended um, for, for the Pfizer one for people 12 and up, um, and for the Moderna vaccine for people 18 and up. Who? And, and so as far as who should get it, like really, you know, as usual, the people who are the highest risk should really be, you know, running to be first in line, um, whether those immunocompromised people or older people or people with health conditions and healthcare workers. Um, but it's available for any of those groups. Well, there are concerns out there that this was maybe too fast track, that it was only tested on mice, uh, didn't go through the human trials like some of the other uh, uh, shots did. Your reaction to that? Is it safe? Sure. So yeah, so I think always the the most important thing is is the safety profile. And so essentially this vaccine is the same, like the both of the vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, are the same as um, as the previous vaccines as far as their ingredients and things like that. The thing that's different is the little mRNA code. Um, there's a new mRNA code added, um, but the rest of the vaccine remains the same. So the safety profile is expected to be the same. As far as the mouse trials and the human trials, the, the information that the FDA used for this was a combination of, of course, like the, the experience that we've had with the millions of doses of the, pre, of the previous version of this same mRNA vaccine, as well as a, a um, human information for an earlier version of the bivalent vaccine that used an earlier Omicron, um, which is now gone, right? It's gone and passed. And then the mouse data was for the latest Omicron showing did they mount an immune response? Um, and so as far as the safety, I'm, I'm not concerned. We expect the safety profile to be the same and to be good. Um, it's that effectiveness piece that um, hasn't been fully studied in humans. And that's what I wanted to ask about, too. It seems like this thing for a while, and I'm guessing still has been just developing and the new variants and subvariants and things like that that we're seeing. How much concern is there that this won't be keeping up with what we're seeing as this thing morphs through their different variants? Yeah, that's exactly the perfect question because because this is the, always the problem that we have with things that change and evolve is that we've been like continuously chasing the variants and by the time, you know, by the time we have the vaccine fully ready to go and fully studied, that variant is gone. And so so actually it's kind of exciting that this mRNA technology allows us to be sort of faster um, in in adjusting and updating a vaccine so that we can you know get get a vaccine that's for what's going on right now right so the the omicron variant that's in this vaccine is still the majority circulating variant which is not what we've had previously right but and so um, and so I think that that's actually a a plus of this vaccine and and of this new way of doing vaccines is that we can be maybe a little bit faster um, in how we react to new viruses. And speaking of timing, there's always a little bit of COVID math when there's a new booster that's approved. You think about, okay, how long has it been since my last shot? I got the first two rounds. So at this point, can you talk about timing for somebody who wants to go out and get this newest round how long should they wait from their last booster yeah so the the, the recommendation is that is that they should wait at least two months since their last covid vaccine um, and that can be a little bit longer so um you know there are some data that if you wait a little bit longer you might get sort of a better boosting effect um, but the minimum the minimum interval from the last time you got a COVID vaccine is two months. Um, it's not officially to say from the last time that you had a COVID infection, but that probably holds pretty true for your last COVID infection as well. 
Your specialty is pediatric infectious diseases, so I'm curious what you're seeing in kids. Are, are more and more kids locally getting vaccinated? You know, we, we, we are. Our vaccine, our vaccine numbers in children are still not nearly what they are in adults. Um, but, you know, I've seen lots of kids who've been vaccinated. You know, we had a lot of kids over this past, over the summer who had the Omicron infection, uh, many who were hospitalized. I can say that overwhelmingly the ones that I saw who were hospitalized were still those unvaccinated kids and largely from unvaccinated families. So, um, you know, I haven't, you know, we don't see the, the ones who are vaccinated getting hospitalized nearly as often. Is this a... Uh, uh is this something that we're just going to be living with from now on? It'll be like the flu vaccine. Um, you know, we just get it every year and hope it's got the latest uh, uh, subvariants and variants of the flu that we've seen. Yeah, I think that's likely what's going to happen. You know, we have lots of coronaviruses and and we, you know, we've been exposed to them over and over and over and over again over the years so that they're kind of common colds for us. And so I think that as we, you know, with with boosters, um, with variants, with variant boosters, and all those things that we kind of build up, you know, sort of a, a complex set of flavors of our immunity that hopefully will give us some cross protection for future variants. But I suspect that the way that this virus behaves, we do have more variants to come. And, and I think that we'll have to tr do our best to, you know, attack those and prevent them as they come along. Dr. Tess Barton with UT Health San Antonio. Always enjoy having you here on the Q&A. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you.